All right, so you're ready to fly some walk snail, HD FPV. Um, you can see here we're taxiing out with the little eSky Eagle. Take a quick look out over the wings, try out the pan and tilt. Um, nothing too exciting other than the fact that we replaced the old canopy with analog system with a new canopy and the walk snail system on it. So we're gonna go ahead and get in the air now. As you can see, we're flying in uh, 1080p at 60 FPS. I'm using the low bit rate right now, 25 megabits per second. Everything looks good, feels good, like in the OSD, full OSD. And just a minute here, you'll see video dropped out, disconnected, showing no signal, transmitter disconnected, and there ends my story with Walksnail, um, at least for now. So let's go ahead and get into what actually happened and we'll look at some logs and things and explain why we have a short video today. Okay, so as you can see, if we look at the log here, this is from the flight controllers or RG pilot runner Matek F765WSE. Um, what actually happened there is, I don't know, what was that? 20 seconds into the flight or so, shortly after takeoff, the uh, speed controller roasted itself. Um, when I took off, I had kind of heard the motor pulsing a little bit. I could hear it. Didn't sound just right. And I started playing with the thro throttle a little bit and everything went black like you saw there. And basically the speed controller cooked itself and it pulled the battery, battery voltage down in the process low enough that everything rebooted, which is why the transmitter disconnected. It actually shut down in the air and the, even the flight controller actually restarted mid-flight and ended that log and started a second log. And that kind of brings up a point I want to talk about with Ardu Pilot. I was actually very impressed when Ardu Pilot rebooted in the air. It's I wasn't aware that it was even able to do this. I didn't know it was smart enough to do it. But basically when it started in the air, if you look at the messages from the second log, there is a watchdog in place that actually looked at some data and sensors and things, I guess, and realized that it was rebooting in flight. And so it basically, it skipped all the arming checks and went straight into arm and initialized in the air and retained its uh, previously set home position. And now as everything had rebooted and shut down in the air, I switched to return to home just, I don't as a last resort, hoping something might come back. But um, so it dropped right into return to home and actually started to glide the airplane it leveled everything and the airplane was gliding back home I actually got video back just before it hit the ground um and i'm pretty confident that if i actually had power if if the motor and speed controller still worked it probably would have flew itself back and circled overhead um so pretty ha pretty happy with that pretty impressed um but as far as the airplane that speed controller roasted and and pulled the battery down and rebooted everything so that kind of explains what happened and why my maiden with the walks and L system was cut short. And I pretty much just walked out there and got the airplane. The only damage was it ripped the uh, nose wheel off. It kind of, you see it in the, in the video there when it kind of landed it, it uh, landed crossways the road there and it broke the nose wheel off. It ripped the foam and everything out, all the plastic bits in there for the steerable nose wheel. And it broke the uh, plywood tray that they all mount to inside as well, which is the same, same piece of wood as the battery tray. It broke the front of it. Um, so as far as getting back in the air, um, I think we're just gonna go ahead and ditch the landing gear. It's it's repairable, it wouldn't be that hard to repair it. But I think I'm just gonna go ahead and fill that hole in the foam with a little block of foam, just smooth it over and get rid of the nose wheel and the main gear. And I kind of weighed some of the parts out. I'll end up losing about 110 grams of weight. Um, and obviously a lot less drag in the air as well. So we'll pick up some efficiency at the cost of taking off and landing on the ground, on the wheels anyway. I'll just do a hand launch and we'll barely land it. Um, it's something I've been kind of considering doing for a while anyway, but we'll go ahead and do it. And I've ordered a new motor just to be safe. I think my motor is still fine, but I went ahead and ordered a new motor and speed controller. And as soon as that gets here, we'll have it in the air ready for the next break in the weather. So hopefully a week from now we'll get to that. So uh, as far as the walk snail system, what I've seen so far, I'm pretty impressed with it. Happy with the video quality. It's fairly easy to mount everything. I'm super impressed with the image quality for the camera size. This is actually the small camera, the nano camera with the full size transmitter board. And um, fonts look really nice. I'm using Sneaky FPV's fonts and 
the uh, there's already a tool out to put the OSD overlay onto the video. The first part of the footage that you saw initially was recorded on the ground with an uh, EasyCap CamLink 4K that's capable of 1080 at 120 frames per second. But obviously I'm only recording at 1080 and 60, which is what I'm getting out of my receiver right now. Um, so that that all works well, but the uh, onboard recordings, or the recording, I'm actually recording in three places. I record on the computer with OBS to get my full ground view and everything, what I'm actually seeing while I fly. And I'm recording in the video receiver, which records the, the ground link video and an OSD file that there's already a tool out. I'll put a link to that as well. It's made by a community member. I'm sorry, I don't remember your username right now, but I will link to it, give you credit for that. Um, makes it easy to overlay the uh, recorded video onto the recorded files and the or the recorded OSD onto the recorded files in the uh, video receiver and then the transmitter also records in its own board storage as well so any loss in link or whatever is you, you get a full video recording you know without running it through the, the RF link first um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with what I see so far. Sorry the video is short. Normally I wouldn't have put it out like this. I would have waited until I get the airplane back in the air and some more footage. But it's been far too long since I made a video and I kind of felt I owed it to you guys. So it is what it is for now. And stay tuned. As soon as we get the airplane fixed, we'll get it back in the air. And uh, hopefully we'll get to fly this stuff some more here pretty soon. Pretty happy with what I see and really, really looking forward to it. Especially after I got a quick that quick little taste of it, flying with it. Um, really looking forward to uh, stretching it out now and seeing what it can do. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching this one. I'll see you all in the next one.